For a while in the late 2000s, it felt like moral choices in games were only going to be a flash in the pan type deal. Mass Effect and GTA 4 showcased some of the most meaningful scenes as various pivotal moments played out in strikingly different ways depending on what you'd done beforehand. Things then went pretty quiet, until 2012's The Walking Dead revitalised the idea of dialogue and character interactions themselves being memorable as hell. Telltale's gem came out of nowhere and changed everything all over again, reminding us that truly memorable interactions can come from something as simple as a conversation. At the heart of all this was player agency and meaningful branching paths, a setup that's forced millions of us into morally grey territory just to see how we'd react. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 7 brutally hard decisions video games forced you to make. Number 7. Killing Dwayne or Playboy X, Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico Bellic's bleak tale of chasing the American dream off the back of broken promises from his cousin Roman is retrospectively one of Rockstar's most mature works, and a building block towards both Red Dead Redemptions. Here though, enter Dwayne, a former high-profile gangster who emerges from a considerable stint in prison only to find plucky upstart Playboy X has overtaken what was once his. Out of sheer pride and dissatisfaction for the way things now are, he's an incredibly dour individual, but one that Nico gets on well with. There comes a point where both Playboy and Dwayne decide that the other must be taken out, but as you're an associate of both, the game leaves the decision up to you. Do you take out the wounded, respected old dog who looks to be on a downward spiral, or the peppy youngster who's cockier than a rebel pilot during a getaway? Blowing Playboy's brains out nets you his swanky condo, whereas killing Dwayne only results in more sorrow for Nico. You can only choose one. Number 6. Save the city, your family, or be rich. Fable 2. Quite possibly the worst would you rather question ever, the close of Fable 2 has you answering a question by the all-powerful Teresa. One that can reverse all the ills of the world done by Lucian, or it could make you the true monster of the whole thing. Laid out before you are three cards, denoting that all the people who have lost their lives at the hands of Lucian's spire prison can be resurrected, your family can come back alongside your beloved dog who'd only just died at this point, or you can choose to be filthy rich. Later DLC would take some of the weight out of these decisions as you could get your dog back in a different way, but as a general philosophical quandary, it's a pretty good one. Number 5. Not having the courage to tell someone you love them. Emily is away. Developed by one man, Kyle Seeley, and also available for free, Emily is Away is a narrative-focused game set within an old-school instant messaging client, like the MSN chats of the 2000s. Now, that description might make some people run for the hills, but if you grew up during this time of everyone discovering what online communication even felt like, it's one hell of a trip. Framed across a number of interactions over time, you talk to the titular Emily across high school and college, going through the motions of flirting and exploring the idea of being together, hearing about her other relationships, having some of your own, and gradually growing apart. It's a great comment on how we change and slowly lose many of the friends that we grow up with, and if you've ever been in the position of falling for someone only to have life circumstances get in the way, it'll play your heartstrings like a violin. Near the close of the game, it's now or never. Clearly the two of you are diverging, but if you've made all the right choices to this point, you have the option to tell Emily how you really feel. However, in picking the appropriate sentiment, your character will then delete the sentence before hitting send, replying with something way more mundane instead. You realise after a few attempts that you just don't have the courage to say what's needed, and one by one your dialogue options get more and more pedestrian, until you as the player must decide to say goodbye to Emily for good. Maybe next time in real life you can seize a moment that was lost here. Number 4. Chopping off your own arm. The Walking Dead Season 1. Season 1 of Telltale's Walking Dead had a huge amount of grey area choices to get through. Whether it be putting the child duck out of his misery as he slowly turned into a walker, taking the food of a family away from their car, or here deciding to try and stimmy the spread of infection by hacking off a much needed limb. Kind of like the torture choice in the first Metal Gear Solid, this is the first time The Walking Dead had given you a choice with an unknown mechanical outcome. If you lost the arm, would that impact Lee's ability to survive later down the line? Maybe you wouldn't be able to interact with the environment in the same way. We didn't know in the moment, but the fact that more walkers were baying for blood in the next room meant that you had to make a choice fast. Whatever you did, the main thread plays out in the same way. But unlike the TV show that seems to have lost the ability to portray the harsh reality of doing anything to survive in a zombie apocalypse, this scene grounded it in an incredibly visceral way that showed Telltale at the top of their game. Number 3. Which half of the game do you want to see? 
The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings. The flip side to a choice that feels incredibly hard in the moment is one given further weight and perspective afterwards. Because turns out the geniuses over at CD Projekt Red pretty much created two entirely different middle chapters for The Witcher 2. Anchored to a choice between siding with terrorist slash freedom fighter Yorveth or Geralt's friend Vernon Roche, going with either puts you on opposite sides of a major racial conflict happening across the continent. This is then framed very differently as you'll journey to totally separate areas, receive wildly altering quests, meet separate individual NPCs, have contrasting dialogue exchanges and everything else. Such a decision is what makes CDPR one of the absolute best developers in the medium, and although many gamers got through Assassins of Kings without realising the other path was literally a completely different game, going back to it now and choosing the other side of the coin is one hell of an eye-opening experience. Number 2 choosing how to torture an innocent man. Grand Theft Auto V. An interview back in 2013 when GTA V first dropped had a member of Rockstar note that if you thought Trevor's torture segment was too strong, you always had the option to turn the game off. While personally I think that resorting to total disengagement kinda means your message has failed, GTA V still became a major talking point around the role of torture in various contexts. This scene went on to define GTA V, not because you had the option to skip it or fight against the people asking you to perform the act, but because the only choice is what weapon do you want to use. It was either live with the consequences of doing and seeing this stuff, or just turn the game off altogether. The bottom line, however effective, is a comment on American foreign policy, and similar to something like Zero Dark Thirty, explores just how ineffective forcing someone to say something really is. Either way, we've got some truly dark subject matter, and the whole scene feels completely disgusting. Still, if you want to get back to more GTA, you have to do the job. And number one, executing an innocent man to save your son. Heavy Rain. The name David Cage divides rooms in a way that only the likes of Peter Molyneux can pull off, but where Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy and Beyond Two Souls were way too ludicrous by the end, Heavy Rain is a grounded murder mystery spread across four different protagonists, all contributing to an eventual endgame. Thematically a love letter to 90s American detective dramas that David Fincher sought more than any other, there's also a touch of Saw in here too. We see Ethan Mars, who you'll know outside the game as father to Jason, getting his other son Sean back by going through various endurance tests. Set on a handful of violent trials by the devious origami killer to prove his love for his child, around the midway mark you're asked to just kill a man simply to see if you will. Heavy Rain has a multitude of endings and you can always resign Ethan's fate to that of the Justice Department if you decide, so the game was literally asking how far will you go to save your son or a loved one in a very direct manner. You do find out through talking to this guy that he's a drug dealer, but that he also has two children, with the game's visualisation of thought patterns weighing up the quote unquote pros and cons of the situation in Ethan's head. If you go through with the kill, Ethan will throw up and find the next piece of the puzzle was in the gun barrel all along. If you leave though, you've failed the killer's demands, pushing Sean to an early grave, unless one of the other characters can find a solution. And those are just a handful of various brutally hard decisions that video games force you to make. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below, and no, I didn't pick Spec Ops or Mass Effect 3, just to get some variety. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.